At Lone Oak Buildings, all of our crews are experienced. Uh, these guys have 25 years experience between the four of them and 15 years with this company. Uh, these guys showed up this morning, RJ and the crew, they went right to work. And uh, about 90 minutes, uh, two hours in, uh, they've laid out their digging pier holes and they're calling for inspections and getting the uh, frame up. So we go right to work in a prompt and professional manner. So we take a transit laser and we set it in the middle of the building. We use that to find the level height of the ground. And the laser shoots out a level playing field. Then we find the highest point of the ground and that tells us where to set the building, usually an inch from the top of the ground. And from there we usually get all of our layout marks for the start of the building. We always use skid steer mounted hydraulic augers with carbide teeth so we can dig through the tough stuff and get your building safe and secure in the ground. Whenever possible, we try to use precast concrete piers. Our precast piers are stronger than conventional concrete and it allows these guys to continue with their work without having to wait for concrete to dry, thereby bringing the whole process to a close in a more timely fashion. Conventional pole barn building is going to be built with piers in the ground like we're doing here, but we can also build on concrete foundations. We use number one and number two yellow pine. Uh, why yellow pine? It's harder, it's stronger, and the very, very biggest reason, it holds a screw. Uh, with yellow pine lumber, the density of the lumber keeps the screws in the metal. Roofing material, lumber to metal, expands and contracts at different rates. Over decades, those screws are typically gonna back out with the softer wood. We stay away from SPF and uh, hemlock type lumbers. We always use a hardwood to keep those screws in for generations. Whether a laminate or a solid timber column, our treatment that we put in the ground is going to be a 0.6 CCA. That means a 60 year warranty for our clients so it's going to last for generations regardless of the type of soil. A few, a few factors there. Number one would be cost. These are 16 foot columns. Uh, as far as girth and, and equitable strength, a laminate column is going to cost a lot more than these. Now if you get up to 19, 20, 22, 24, you start getting really long, try getting a timber that long. Also, usually another dynamic is when you get that long, you also have more wind loading. So you're getting into bigger and bigger columns. These are pencils, you know, these are, these are dinky. Well, it's a lot easier, it's a lot more cost effective. For instance, say I need a 26 foot long eight by eight. Good luck getting a railroad tie that's 26 feet long that's straight, okay? And if you can find it, it's gonna, you're gonna have to you know, hock the farm to get it. So, but you can laminate four ply two by eight columns and then their number one yellow pine up top, the bottom six feet would be treated. So there's staggered joints in there where they make a transition and they do those different ways. Um, ultimately achieving the same strength or even more strength. Also, these are gonna have some natural variants to them. We use a high quality, but still there's a spectrum of variants that's allowable within that quality standard. When you're using laminates, you can have a board a million feet long and it's straight as an arrow. You're never gonna get that with a solid timber. So. When you're welding three or four or five pieces of lumber together, they'll actually put them through a roll former and nail and glue. We typically use a nail glue laminate, a combination lamb. So they're nailed and glued and pressed and milled. There's a lot of manufacturing that goes into it, but it's a great product, typically only used when it's needed and that's on really large buildings for the most case. Uh, our standard pole barn is typically going to be eight foot center. Uh, a lot of our clients are going to ask about four foot center trusses. Is it necessary? When's it appropriate? Um, am I just wasting my money? Uh, it's an excellent question. There's a dynamic that goes into it. Um, we can hang ceiling liners, which is the biggest reason people go with four foot center. They think I won't be able to hang a ceiling on eight foot center. We hang 26 gauge, a slightly heavier metal to span eight foot center especially in compound spans, 
it'll hold up, it'll actually make the building stronger, and it'll save on a 30 by 40 building about $400. So you're in the 30 cent per square foot range, and you can multiply that by the size of the building versus going four foot center with a 29 gauge, a lighter gauge metal. Um, ultimately, you're gonna achieve the same goals. A four foot center truss is exactly half as strong as an eight foot center truss. Um, you're not necessarily making the building stronger. We can engineer for nearly anything. There's other reasons to go with four two foot center. Uh, some of our clients are gonna want sheetrock ceilings. It's uncommon in a pole barn, but when it happens, uh, the best way to tackle that is usually go ahead with two foot center trusses. Um, a lot of those are shouses uh, where people are just gonna finish them off insulate them, use them as a residence. We do that a lot. Uh, but our, my main goal is to figure out what the client wants and help them get there. Uh, and sometimes that's the cheapest route. Sometimes it's not the most economical, um, but we work within their budget and with what they wanna do. Um, another thing about our trusses, even an eight foot center truss, if we build a hay barn, all it is is a hay barn, it's a shelter. We always add a ceiling load to it. In addition to that 20 pound per square foot snow load, we're adding a five pound per square foot ceiling load. The dynamic there is that if you never hang a ceiling in it, you're fine. But if you get five years, 10 years down the road, and like most people, myself included, you're not sure what you're gonna do with this building 10 years from now and you say, boy, I wanna put a ceiling in there, you're set. You're not abusing the truss, you're not misusing the engineering, you're not doing anything unsafe. So that's kind of baked in the cake when you build with Lone Oak. Uh, our standard pole barn pitch is gonna be 412. Um, we have uh, a lot of clients that want a 312 pitch. Um, more yet, especially for residential who want a steeper pitch. Uh, we can do those as well. Uh, typically a slightly higher cost, um, but our standard is 412, and uh, that seems to work great with what they call steep pitch steel roofing. Our, our standard pole barns are gonna be 29 gauge metal. Why 29 gauge metal? Well, we're building with lumber frame. Lumber framing means all of our wall girts and roof purlins are gonna be on two foot divisions. That's a lot of, that's a lot of connections, it's a lot of screws. Ultimately, that's gonna be stiffer and flex less than say a commercial steel building. We also though offer as an option 26 gauge metal. Uh, eight foot center roofing will use 26 gauge metal. Sometimes we have equestrian barns and people know that horses are gonna kick it. Uh, it's not uncommon to have a wainscot around the building where just the wainscot is a heavier gauge for that reason. Uh, sometimes people are worried about hail damage. Uh, things of that nature, but we can do 29 gauge metal. We can do 26 gauge metal uh, at a slightly higher cost. Standard finish for us is going to be a 40 year silicone siliconized polyester finish. Um, that's a high, high silicone content. What does that mean? It means it's going to flex. It's not going to crack up in crow's feet. It also means it's not going to oxidize. Red's not going to turn pink in five years, things of that nature. Um, so even your deep dark colors with the southern exposure, they're not gonna oxidize, they're not gonna fade. Our warranty covers crack and chip, but it also covers fade and chalk. And you don't get that everywhere. So the longevity of the material is not gonna be different for 26 gauge or 29 gauge. You might be paying for some durability and dent resistance, but the lifespan of the metal is not necessarily gonna be longer. All of our 40 year panels are gonna be affixed with matching powder coated screws. Um, those are gonna last a long time and they're a dual grip. So they're gonna stitch metal to metal and they're gonna keep the metal snug with the lumber frame as well. Windows, you know, uh, typically we're gonna use a uh, vinyl new construction window. Um, that's gonna be a thermal pane insulated glass, just two panes. That's standard. We don't use any, in quote, barn windows, you know, no cheap pane windows. Even in a non-insulated building, you're gonna get icing, condensation, and things like that. And it's usually not the best way to uh, save five bucks. 
Um, but you know that's typical new construction vinyl we can also do wood windows vinyl clad uh, wood windows um, single hung double hung uh, pretty much if you can dream it we can put it in but uh, atrium windows um, you know if you've got uh, say for instance you've got a scissor truss situation where you're hanging a ceiling that's at an angle uh, we can put in atrium windows up in the top that are going to match the pitch of the roof or the pitch of the ceiling whichever you prefer well let me tell you about our doors um, we can do certainly sliding doors are popular for uh, economical or agricultural use but we also do overhead doors uh, we carry three brands that we deal with and inside of those brands we can do virtually any color and any style of door insulated non-insulated glass sections glass designs um, different embossments long panels short panels if you've seen it we can get it we can we can we service commercial and residential operators up to 24 feet wide that'd be a 40-year panel and it's actually a 20-year the galvanized panel underneath but when the paint shop gets it their warranty actually covers the panel that's underneath that and that's a 40 year uh, we don't mess with any of the 20 or 10 year panels and, and the reason being our manifold uh, the main one being color retention you look around and you see these red buildings that are pink and green buildings that are you know not quite so green um, it doesn't matter what deep dark color how much exposure is on there uh, very very little separation in the uh, paint pixels over you know 20 years we've done hunter green roof extensions where we take a building that's say 50 feet long and we continue that same roof line once we get the crud washed off of it you usually can't tell the difference and we're talking 10 15 years or better in direct sunlight you know so this stuff is amazing um, it's usually the biggest variation in color is due to mold dirt and things like yeah. that you know especially if you got a situation like this uh, workmanship warranty standard is going to be five years from day of completion um, now with that said i don't care if it's 20 years we're going to take care of people um, we've had a couple of isolated things where people have a problem they just didn't notice it and you know say they were out of town or it was a summer house or whatever and uh, they call us up five six years later they're out of warranty it doesn't matter we're going to take care of them uh, typically we're going to use on a pole barn building we're typically going to use a uh, uh, bubble wrap insulation uh, usually this consists of a double bubble it's actually two pieces of bubble wrap looks like exactly what's in your mind right now packing bubbles heavier material but it's going to look the same um, Typically, this is a single-sided, that meaning aluminized on one side. And what you'd see from the interior would be a white polyvinyl. Nice, clean, bright look. It's washable. Um, it's certainly rip and tear resistant, uh, but it's waterproof and the bugs don't eat it. It's not going to wick moisture like a fiberglass will. Um, we do inner liners as well. Steel inner liners are super popular. Shops, garages, commercial buildings. Um, adds an extra layer of fire protection, certainly for welding shops, things like that. And it's up, it's done. There's no finishing sheet rock, no painting. A pre-finished panel, just like we'd use on the outside. Typically white, but we can do other colors. And it's up, it's hard, it's clean, and it's done. We're typically out in just a couple of days versus waiting weeks even for sheetrock and paint. Lone Oak buildings are versatile, economical, and attractive. So whether you're needing a new riding arena, hay barn, garage shop, or just some place to park your toys, we've got you covered. You can go on our website and use our online tool or contact our office and talk to a building professional. At Lone Oak Buildings, we'll work with you from start to finish. We know we're not just building a building, we're building your building. So no matter what your vision is, we want to be a part of it.